context which led this music to be to be sublimated in, in the first place. Uh, I'm going to open it up in a moment to ask if there are any questions out there, but let me just ask the performers uh, one more question, and that is, was there something new about hearing this new music that will inform the way you play or sing Mendelssohn in the future? <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, we not. Well, I, I wanted to say that um, it was fascinating to play it in light of knowing the Mendelssohn works that we do know and uh, how that informed our performances, our premieres of, of these works, or at least I'll speak for myself, um, because, uh, for instance, this is a gross generalization, but you know, you, you take a piece of Bach that you don't know and you, you play it and you immediately, you know, think serious and religious, you know, for, for lack of better information, or, you know, Beethoven, you know, Celestial, or, or Schumann, impetuous and romantic. It, it, this is nauseatingly generalizing, so forgive me. Um, but this is how you take a, the piece knowing the composer um, from other works. With Mendelssohn, knowing um, how he's written, you, you, you take these works and you think of them in terms of the incredible sincerity, emotional sincerity that Mendelssohn has in, um, sort of a very, very special, genuine sentiment that he put in all the works that we had known. And we look at these newly discovered works uh, through the prism of, 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 of that emotion, and it stands up to the litmus test. And it's, it's just uh, such a rewarding experience that way. Any thoughts on that, Kevin? I would agree. Um, my first uh, experience uh, performing any classical music on my own I was exposed to Messiah very early on, but the first uh, year I went to a music camp, we did Mendelssohn's Elijah, and uh, Abraham Kaplan uh, was the conductor of the performance, and his passion for this music, for, for Mendelssohn, just sold me on the whole career, the whole, whole concept of pursuing music, so I, I thank Mendelssohn for that personally. And, and I, I agree with uh, Anna that uh, Really, the simplicity of this music, it, it, it has that thread of sincerity that goes through it I, that, that I find in, in, in most all of Middleton's music that I, I've been exposed to. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I, this has any, this is maybe slightly off, off topic, but just if you were curious, our fugues that, um, that uh, Stephen arranged directly from the manuscript that he um, obtained in various uh, locations around the world, these fugues were um, given to us just with the notes, no dynamics, no indication of tempo, of, of uh, character, no slurs, absolutely clean. And I think in some ways Stephen's intention was to give it to us as he, as he arranged it, but I'm sure he can speak more clearly on that subject. But for us as musicians, it's kind of like you have this clean palette I mean, you can start, and, and we, were, we were ending pieces loud, or we were ending pieces softly, or we could do almost anything. We could start it at one tempo, and then say, okay, no, maybe this is much better at, at twice as fast. And the liberty, that, the freedom that we had to try to figure out what would be uh, Mendelssohn's concept, or what would be, what, what, how we would serve the music the best, it was, it was challenging for us, because normally you have some indications from a composer. <coughs> Luckily, Stephen then came to our, one of our rehearsals, uh, at Montclair State, and, and actually still didn't give us anything more than a quote, maybe at the beginning of one or two or three of the few, saying, you know, uh, what was it, like, lighthearted, or, or um, but play, it, it was like, play, uh, was staccatissimo, yet the half notes must not, must be sung, or something like this, very contradicting um, language, and so we were kind of, you know, we fought among the four of us, but it, it's the most exciting thing to have an opportunity where you can interpret something as if it's as if it's well, it's, it had never been interpreted, other than maybe in, in, in Mendelssohn's mind and at the piano where he composed it. It's it was an, I think it's one of the great honors, at least the great opportunities we've had as a string quartet. Was this musicological advice, or were you channeling Mendelssohn? Um, and, no, these were actually from some quotes from 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 some letters. Yeah, when he makes references to these works. Yeah, he didn't make any. He didn't make it up. <laughs> <making it out. laughs> One of the highlights of the quartet, Opus 13, uh, string quartet, we sing our repertoire, and he composed when he was 17 years old. And the, 
climax, one of the climax of the second movement it was also fugue. And the, the climax, the, for about four or five measures, is note to note exactly the same as one of the fugues we played. So I was very, uh, you know, that was one of those moments, of, hey, there's a relation, you know. He had his idea five, uh, five years ago, he was 12. <laughs> 